Welcome back. Today we're talking about tomatoes. It's mid-March and my last predicted frost date is mid-May. So I'm getting my vine and tomatoes started and in a previous video I showed you these micro dwarf tomatoes from Bradgate and that I was potting these on and here is one of them. You can see how that's already took off nicely. But I also stated that I don't usually start my tomatoes like that, that I start them individually. And so each year I do 12 different varieties, most of which will be new to me. So I have very few that I actually do where I grow the same variety every year. But the one that I do grow every single year is this one. Barry's Crazy Cherry. It's a multi-floor and that, you can see, lives up to its name. So these seed were from Baker Creek in the US, who unfortunately no longer ship here to the UK. And I'm very sad about that. But you can get these seed also direct if you're in the US from Brad Gates at Wild Boar Farms, which I highly recommend doing. But there are various places that you can pick Brad seed up in the UK as well. Or if you're on mainland EU, then I highly suggest Vertulum because they're a specialist tomato and pepper supplier. And I've used those before as well. So the reason that I don't grow the same varieties every year is that I'm not actually a raw tomato fan. And so I'm forever chasing that ultimate tomato that I might actually like. But I do cook with tomatoes quite a lot. And so that's why I grow a big variety of them. Now these are all my vining tomatoes. And you can see that I've got my tags here already set up. And I grow all of my tomatoes outdoors as well. And so I'm also looking for the ones that are pest and disease resistant. The great thing about the Barry's Crazy Cherry is that it is exceptionally blight resistant, which it has to be where I live because I live in a high blight risk area. So even if you grow indoors, you're just as likely to get blight here as you are if you're growing outside. So my tomatoes here are set up in groups. So I have my cherry tomatoes. This one I'm growing this year because it was recommended to me by an artist friend of mine years ago. And I've had the seed, it's a Saladet F1 called Shimmer. And then these come into smaller ox hearts, then into the big beef tomatoes. And this one, Super Mama, is a massive, quite an ox shape. But it is a big beef tomato and I grew it last year. Now the thing was last year we had a really weird growing season but I was also very late due to health problems and dealing with seriously bad companies. I was late getting my plants in but this did do exceptionally well but I had to get them in early as well. I usually do, that's another issue. If you grow outside these late date maturing because on seed packets, if I use this Baker Creek packet, um, what you'll see is that they are wonderful for giving lots of information on their packets and um, they will give information about how to plant and um, they'll also give days to maturity. Now the thing about that is that here in the UK, we're not gonna get away with direct sowing our tomatoes. They've got to be started indoors due to our short growing season. But days to maturity is from when you transplant outside or into your greenhouse, but it's to when the tomato is actually green and it's finished because tomatoes ripen from the inside out and then it can take just as long for that tomato to ripen as it does to actually become mature. So that's why it seems like they sit on the plant forever. That ripening process is also dependent on temperatures. So when you grow in a greenhouse, if it's too hot or too cool, that might prevent ripening as well. So it's one of the reasons why 
as soon as they start to turn from that solid dark green into a paler matte green, I actually take mine off and bring them in the house to finish off because it's highly unlikely that the taste values are going to change that much and also because of watering as well. I don't want my tomatoes to get flooded and the taste values to change outside. Another one that I'm trying new this year is Gigantamo and that's another late day one because the bigger tomato it is the longer it's going to take to grow and finish ripening. Now these I don't start with the trick that I showed in a previous video which if you haven't seen that I'll link it at the end but I do use something else which I wanted to show you. If you're like me and you struggle getting hold of seeds, because some of these cherry tomato seeds, like these Brad Gate ones, can be quite small. So as you can see there, so they can be a bit fiddly for me to pick up. So what I wanted to show you was a tip. If you take a matchstick, dip it in water, touch the seed, it'll actually pick the seed up and then I've already got my holes done and you can just wipe it into the hole like that. Oh and by the way, my holes are done. This is um, what I also use for my plant tags. Uh, I, when I've write, written these out, I know a lot of people complain that when they write their plant tags out, by the middle of the season they don't know what's what because the plant tags have faded. So this is a write for all by Stabilo, in no way affiliated to them. The other colours don't last so well, but the black ones do. And then, as you can see, the tip of it, I use that like a little dibber. And so that's what all my holes have been made with. And so then, again, the camera will focus in. The seed is on the end of there. And I can just pop those in. I've just got a little pot of water. And also, saves me having to further touch the seed. And that's those done. So in here, I've got Barry's Crazy Cherry the blue cream berry, which is another Brad Gates one, and that seed has been sent to me by the lovely Heather from Sage and Stone Homestead. I will link to her channel down below. Please go check her out because she's lovely, especially if you like goats. And I, I love her channel. I haven't watched for a little while. I'm going to go and binge watch the rest of her channel because I took a break of watching the people that I follow. So if I haven't commented on any of your channels for a while, and I usually do watch and comment, I had to pull back for health reasons. And so that, that's the only reason that I haven't been commenting on other people's channels. Or I've been watching in the background ground but because of my hands it's often difficult for me with my sight issues and hand issues but I do still often watch in the background I'm just not commenting but um, I, I do appreciate everybody and I, I also wanted to say I'd had a complaint about adverts being on my channel my channel isn't monetized that's actually not my choice that's something that I'm aware has happened but YouTube is doing that to everybody. So I apologize if there's advert, but if you'd please stick with me through it because it's actually damaging small channels like ours. YouTube never used to do that, but now they are. They're just sticking adverts on everybody's channels. So I wasn't aware of it to start off with. I have no control over that. I am sorry, but I would appreciate it if people would stick with us and watch till the end because otherwise, if you don't, YouTube assumes you don't like our content and that's hard enough for somebody like me anyway that's not in front of the camera. And I do have reasons for not being in front of the camera as well. So to those of you that stick with me and watch to the end, I really do appreciate that. It means a lot to the algorithms because otherwise, you know, YouTube assumes that our content isn't liked and then it doesn't push it to other people. So I'm going to do the rest of these off camera but what I wanted to say was I'm using the Charles Dowden CD60 tray which is one of these because once these start sprouting through I water them from the bottom 
but it also makes it really easy because these are all going to germinate at different times and they'll all be ready for potting on at slightly different times and you don't want to allow these to get leggy because they're vines they're going to act in a different manner to these micro dwarfs. What I'll do is I'll pop them on into these four inch pots and I'm going to have to watch the long range forecast for these because even though I'm temperate zone 8 and so my last frost day is predicted to be mid-May, I live in such a weird little area with its own microclimate that I can get frosts and even snow up to June. You know we can go all winter and not get snow and then all of a sudden get it in May or we can get a heat wave in March but watching that long range forecast means that I can start moving my plants in and out of the house to rough them off maybe get them outside early and what I'll do is I'll list all the varieties I'm growing down below and the seed companies that I've bought them from some of the companies no longer ship into the UK but you might be able to find them elsewhere. The Barry's Crazy Cherry you'll definitely get in the UK from other suppliers. I'm in no way affiliated to any of the companies that I'm going to list below but I just wanted to show you how I do actually start my tomatoes off and explaining the reasons why and also when you're told that you must have a greenhouse or a polytunnel to grow tomatoes in the UK no you don't you just need to take a bit more care of them and watch for the blight coming if you are in group late blight comes on the wind and so if it's coming around you the best thing to do is to get your tomatoes harvested and just get them in or just be checking your plants continuously because that's all I do and I grow all of my tomatoes outdoors regardless of whether they're say you know they say that they're indoor or outdoor tomatoes I don't pay attention to any of that I just grow them so I hope you find this useful I hope that you'll um, watch the other videos if you haven't already seen them and like subscribe and share because it really does help to push the algorithm so that other people will see them too. So I hope you'll come back and watch everything else. Bye for now.